welcome back to the review. Uh, here we're talking about Hyborian Gates. Um, this thing, we're reviewing this game very specifically because it's a very interesting game to talk about and one I thought would be very interesting for this channel to review. This game came out in 95 from Cards and it featured heavily the art of Julie Bell and Boris Vallejo. Um, and they are a married couple who are both artists. They do a lot of uh, extensive art for uh, fantasy, sci-fi, um, book illustrations, game cover illustrations, a bunch of stuff. So they do a lot of stuff. And so this game came out featuring that art very heavily. And it was very obvious that that's what the focus was. It was a very large base set. I think th over 300 cards, which is huge for a base set. Um, so, you know, it came out and it ended up having negative reviews. I ended up having reviews that were, you know, lackluster to very negative reviews. Um, so it didn't last long. It had one premiere set and that was it before it was uh, canceled. Um, so let's talk about it. I'm going to just do my general thoughts or impressions on this. And then my other videos will focus on the card types and then a walkthrough and then a fourth video on this game that deals with an actual game play, a full game you can watch. Um, I'm going to cover everything in these first three videos so that by the time you watch that fourth video, you can just watch it and understand what's going on um, and just be able to watch it clean through. It'll be a fast and furious kind of gameplay. Okay, so this game came out, like I said, 95 in cards, poor reception, but this game is basically, the idea of this game is you have six dimensions, six points of realities that exist simultaneously. Um, and these dimensions, you access these dimensions with a pyramid complex or multiple pyramid complexes that allow transportation from your ready area, which is sort of your staging ground area for all of your forces. And those pyramid complexes allow you to travel from that staging area, ready area, to those dimensions to try and conquer them. You're going to have, um, you know, in a two-player game, your, your goal is to control five of the six dimensions. If you control five of the six dimensions, you win the game in a two-player game. And that's the whole goal. Um, and it's a very simple basis for the game. Uh, it's you going out uh, and it's uh, sending your troops out, engaging in combat with uh, a trooper or possibly multiple troopers in what we would call a campaign. Um, so these, these campaigns allow you to, these campaigns that you initiate allow you to clear out dimensions and take control of them. At the end of it, and the game is broken up into, very important to understand, the game is broken up into, the, the game composes of one large sequence that if no one achieves victory by the end of that sequence, repeats. Um, and there are several, there are a number of different stages in this sequence, and one of those stages has a number of different phases. Um, and I'll explain that really quick. Um, so basically, um, this game works where these stages in the sequence, that they are all by default um, simultaneous, uh, with the exception of the player turn sequence. The player turn sequence is a non-simultaneous stage. Uh, uh, and so that, sorry, the whole thing is a sequence, I'm sorry. Um, so they're all simultaneous except for the player turn stage. That stage is non-simultaneous. Um, and that's the one stage where you switch off between players. Uh, whoever has the initiative would go first, and then the other person would then go and take his phases in that stage, and then you would finish out the course of the rest of the sequence, and then repeat if no one had won. Um, now again, victory is five of the six dimensions in a two-player game, and that will change if you have more players, which you can. You can do up to eight players in this game, um, which is a lot, um, but you can do up to eight technically, and that will reduce the number of dimensions that you have to control to win the game. <clears throat> so, um, the and what makes this game, <clears throat> and so let me just review here, let me tell you that definitely, obviously, yes, uh, the game was obviously a cash grab on both the Julie Bell and Boris Vallejo art, obviously, a <laughs> huge grab on that art, huge cash grab. Um, and in addition to um, the CCG, TCG market. So it was a way they thought to, to sell the art within this new medium that was going crazy at the time in the 90s. 
Um, and it was that. I, I, <laughs> I'm not blind to that fact. And anyone who takes looks at this uh, with a very analytical, serious mind uh, will admit to that fact. I do. Uh, it's very obvious. But the question that we ask ourselves in these situations, um, when it, in especially this game, Hyborian Gates with this situation, is despite those issues, despite this, the obvious um, uh, reasoning behind it, and the obvious um, just pulling of all this already done art that these artists have done into uh, a game to just buy into and cash grab on the craze of, this, of a CCG. Despite those factors, is there a good game in Hyperion Gates? Is there a game that's something to enjoy? And my answer and in this review is yes. I, I enjoy this game a lot. Is it my favorite game in the world? No, <laughs> not by a long shot. Um, definitely not my favorite. Um, and I, there are definitely some aspects to it that are very simplistic and other areas that are very complicated. Um, so definitely it's, again, not my favorite uh, game in the world. But again, it is enjoyable. There is a good game in there despite those uh, deficiencies. So basically, um, like I said, the basic thing is you're going to have a return that you draw cards, play troopers, which are your main combat source, send them out, fight, and try to control the most dimensions. So that's it. Um, now I will tell you right now, uh, there are two big bonuses. Uh, sorry, the other thing that was a detriment is the rule book was not written very well. So this rule book here, um, you see it's very simple in terms of you've got uh, a very clear, bland, white font, but the writing isn't too small. You can read it fairly easily. Um, it includes a, a grid on the back here for transportation and so forth, which you need. Um, but, um, there are some areas in the rule book that are very vague. So because of the, how vague those areas are, um, you really have to read this rule book thoroughly in its full context at least three times. You know, I would say at least three times in its full context, notating every word, every phrase in its context, in its entirety, for you to be able to understand how to play the game. And even then, there's going to be uh, one or two areas that are vague that are not clear and that you have to make a logical assumption on um, a decision as players to make. But, um, <clears throat> but that, so those, that's the, the downsides to this game. Um, the pluses. The art is beautiful. Now again, the downside of that same coin is that it is recycled art. So I mean there's, I think there's a Double Dragon art from that Double Dragon game that is has a different title that's used in this CCG with a completely different title, but the exact same recycled art that they had done for an, a game cover. So again, recycled art. Um, but despite that fact, the art in itself is amazing. Um, there's a reason that they have won awards and reasons why people flock to their art, because their art is just amazing. And it's beautiful, amazing art that really is visually stunning. So it's a huge bonus. The art is incredibly beautiful. Um, so that's a plus. The other plus is what makes this game unique, and that is the gate system. Um, and that is, again, these pyramid complexes that you will build during the course of the game, construct, and then use for transportation. It's different, it's unique, it's very um, nuanced, but very interesting. Uh, so that's a huge plus. It makes this game very different. It is a very different game because of that. So I highly recommend, um, again, that you look at that. Um, but so that is a bonus. Um, and honestly, the, uh, the combat system isn't too complex. Um, it's really when it comes down to the bottom, the bottom line, when the end, when all cards have been played, you're just looking at attack and defense numbers and comparing them. That's really all it is. So um, it's not too complicated for that or even playing cards. It's really the, the only thing that gets complex in this game, again, is, again, the transportation system of the pyramid complexes which requires for you to fully understand this graph on the back of this of the construction booklet. So, <clears throat> um, anyway, so those are the pluses and minuses, uh, you know, the ins and outs of the game, uh, the basic run through. So here's my, my final, uh, my final analysis of the game. My final analysis of the game is I enjoy this game. Um, I like the game and I enjoy it quite a bit, like I said, so I would recommend and, and recommend people to give it a try, give it a whirl 
and just see if it's something that you would enjoy. I think there are people who would really thoroughly enjoy this game um, if they didn't get too wrapped up in the concept of, again, all those other, um, uh, the, naysaying, the naysaying of it all and, and those things like that. If they would just give it a chance, I think there's a lot of people that would enjoy this game. Um, just go into it with an open mind um, and just, you know, try it out, I think. So I like this game. Uh, I enjoy it. My review is I, I'd say it's worth, rec I, I recommend it's worth trying out. It's worth giving it a chance. So again, that's Hyborian Gates. Again, came out in 95 from Cards. Um, and it's loosely based off the Conan mythos because Hyboria was a location or a dimension or <clears throat> in uh, the Conan mythology. So it loosely ties into that. Um, but anyway, so I recommend it, Hyborian Gates. Thank you, and we'll see you next time on the review.